Hey, what's up, guys? This is Astronox, and I'm back with another Epic 7 video. So, we got Azimanak Hunt that just got released. I cleared stage 11 a few times already. This is my team, and I'm gonna explain why I'm using these heroes. And I will talk about the fight mechanics and all that. So, let's begin. Buff removal is pretty much required for this uh, boss fight, unless you can somehow manage to keep uh, like a hundred percent uptime on uh, buff blocking uh, debuff now the boss is immune to the usual stun sleep silence and provoke but also the boss is immune to combat readiness reduction and you cannot steal his buff do not apply three debuffs or more against the boss because he uh, on the next attack the boss will just remove all those debuffs don't apply three buffs or more on your team because if the boss attacks someone with three buffs what happens is that it will trigger the boss's ultimate every time the boss's ultimate removes all your buffs applies a uh, few bleeds effect and silence your team you definitely don't want that to happen a bunch of times so you need to have a team that has two buffs maximum or less so yeah two buffs maximum and you don't want you want two debuffs maximum on the boss the best debuff that you can apply are defense down of course because it increases the uh, uh, doubles your damage output roughly against the boss that's a no-brainer and also attack down debuff I would say is the uh, strongest debuff in term of survival for your team it's just gonna cut the boss's attack in half so we've got the berserk here uh, this the berserk buffs the attack uh, the defense and the speed of the boss uh, the boss and it stacks up to four times each stack increase uh, the attack defense and speed greatly you after two it you're already taking uh, a massive beating so you definitely don't want this to stack that's why you need to remove buffs this is the things I've been talking about the immunities immune de decrease uh, combat readiness and uh, immune to buff stealing so yeah I would say that Defense down to uh, kill the boss ASAP. A ASAP is uh, very strong. Attack down debuff together. Those two are the best, I would say. If you don't have attack down debuff, uh, speed down debuff could be uh, quite useful. It's a 30% reduction in speed. Of course, uh, buff uh, blocking debuff is very strong or hit chance reduction is very strong as well but yeah don't run three now let me just show you here this i talked about it he's gaining berserk after every fourth attack and it stacks now this thing tenacious vigor if caster has a three or more uh, debuffs when attacked all are dispelled decreases damage suffered from a single attack by all allies by 80 percent if there's and Azimuthus Observer at the beginning of the turn. The Observer is the one that's in the egg right now, and it has defense buff. And when there's one that is up, it's actually giving a defense buff to the uh, boss as well. And it looks like it cannot be removed. So yeah, having area uh, damage AOE is huge in this fight. Bellona is actually doing that. Now, additionally, decreases the opponent's amount healed by 90% when caster's health is below 30% after attack. So when the boss reaches 30% uh, or less health, you are doing a tenth of your healing. So you could keep yourself alive with healing. Yes, it's going to be much less. But this could end up really badly if, let's say, you get hit by a few mechanics and you can't keep up in terms of healing. Barrier is actually quite useful because the strength of the like the healing of the barrier, the, the barrier does not get reduced, so it, it has full strength. 
Now, you cannot bring uh, Dn in here. It's, she's not going to be working too good for you because she, by herself, brings three buffs. And this thing attacks enemy, uses Death Trap if target has three or more buffs. So yeah, if you got three buffs or more, this thing will trigger Death Trap. Three turn cooldown, attacks all enemies, triggering damage from currently inflicted poison and bleed effects. Okay, I... I didn't uh, explain this thing properly. This, I, I thought it was applying bleeds, but no, it attacks everyone and it triggers the damage from poison and bleed effects. Dispels all buffs and silence for one turn. So yeah, you got three buffs or more and it's gonna keep on, the boss will keep on using this thing, but it, it cannot use it back to back because your buffs will be removed and you'll be silenced. So there's gonna be uh, some, like, it's gonna take you a while to get your three buffs back up. But you definitely don't want to be, uh, like, hit by this thing earlier than uh, every three turn. It's gonna make it so much harder to, uh, to survive this fight. Sharp Cut attacks all enemies with a 70% chance each to uh, inflict... Two bleed effects for two turns. Revive that as a menace observer. So this is where you're getting bleeds from, and the the mechanic is that the Azimuth observer becomes turns into an Azimuth scout after two turns. Now, what the Azimuth scout can do is really deadly. They can apply defense down for two turn. They can, looks like when they spawn, they can apply a three turn attack down debuff. It's not that big of a deal with my group composition. But defense down debuff uh, seems to be applied whenever they are attacking with their skill one. They, now the deadly part is that they can apply an area attack they, and it can apply up to three poison effects for two turns now imagine you're getting hit by those three poison effects for two turn and let's say both of them do it and the boss then uses that trap releasing the damage from the poison plus the bleed that's been adding up on you really it's it's extremely deadly so if you're unlucky and this happens you're probably gonna die <clears throat> unless you have uh, debuff immunity up or un unless you just like remove those uh, debuffs extremely quickly after they are applied but yeah also they can apply unhealable for uh, it was two turns I believe that I've seen they can also apply cannot be buff debuff for two turns. Now I would say that uh, you definitely don't want the Berserk to stack above two. You, uh, if, if let's say you get unlucky and whoever on your team is removing uh, debuffs, for me it's Clary. I mean, if she does miss a few times, I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. Now it just it worked. Thing is, you need 55% effectiveness to counter the effect resistance of the boss. There is always 15% chance of missing, so if you get hit by that 15% uh, chance to, to uh, like you get resisted with that uh, dispel, yeah, you're in trouble. It's gonna be really hard to have a 100% success rate on these runs, to be honest. Now, if you want to make things easier, when the boss reaches 30% uh, 30, uh, 30 health or below, you could pop your Guardian dealing damage based on the target's max health. Really, that is the, the best way to have the higher success rate on, on these runs. But, like, I'm talking about an auto run right now. I'm doing an auto run. But, yeah, if you, like, pay attention and you notice the boss is almost dead, you could pop your Guardian. It's going to simplify things. Take, take care of the adds and also deal damage to the boss. You could pop your gardens like back to back and all that because your souls, I mean, they're going to be full by the end of the fight in most cases. So yeah. Now, the more support heroes that you use, the slower the uh, Berserk will stack. So if you're using a bunch of healers, like Clary, her skill 3 doesn't attack. 
Angelica, in my case, on skill 2 she's healing, skill 3 she's uh, healing the whole team, plus uh, applying uh, cannot be a debuff, uh, uh, debuff immunity, she's applying barrier as well, Destina, she's on skill 2 healing, uh, one ally giving combat readiness, skill 3 is healing the whole team, based on her max health, same with skill 2, and also it removes all debuffs and healing uh, uh giving combat treatment for each of those debuffs removed so really like destina is doing a lot of work i would to be honest be using akatis if i had her there is the slight possibility that akatis skill two uh, by applying immortality it might give you three buffs on one of your heroes but the thing is when the boss uses this thing this is a single target attack so yeah, the, the, the target that will have Immortality will be healed, so it's probably going to bring their health back up in, uh, to a uh, healthy state, and <clears throat> the boss might target someone else instead. So, yeah, I mean, there's a slight chance that the boss will attack the, this uh, target, and you might have barriers still up from, let's say, if you're well, running Angelica. If you have three buffs, and then it's going to trigger that trap. But the thing is, Akatis brings attack down debuff, which, which cuts the boss's attack in half. It, it's huge, it's super powerful. And she removes all debuffs and then heals with skill 3. Uh, skill 2 heal and apply immortality on one target. I mean, it, it, her kit is really great. I wish I had her, I still don't. So yeah, I would say that you could definitely, if you don't have Bellona, use Akatis with Clurry and Yuna. And your fourth spot is flexible. Just make sure you are not applying uh, three debuffs or more, and that you are not applying three buffs on your team or more. Now Yuna will destroy the ads extremely fast. That is the downside with my team. Bellona is taking her sweet time because I don't have her built super offensively. She has a good mix of uh, speed, uh, health, defense. Her attack is in the low 2000s, so really, like she cannot knock out the ads really quick. But Yuna, she's gonna really kill them very fast for you. So she's also a free-to-play hero, so that's very good. Clurry, you just need to summon her once and then you do her specialization to Falconer Clurry. Akates, she's a four-star, quite obtainable. And your fourth spot could be a mix of, uh, <clears throat> could be different type of heroes, really. I mean, you cannot, that's the downside, though. <clears throat> they are messing up with different team compositions that we could use like you cannot do angelica plus akates unfortunately uh, sorry uh angelica and yuna because that's gonna provide you with four buffs and that just doesn't work guys because the boss will just keep on uh using this and then it will trigger this it's the same thing, let's say you're trying to use Angelica and Dian, it's not gonna work. Dian by herself gives you three buffs, so it definitely doesn't work. Now, other things, like you could definitely do Akates, Destina, Yuna, and Clurry. That is a very uh, obtainable team, because most players, they actually start started with Destina, they rolled on their Selective Summon at 10-10. Akates, you might have gotten her... Uh, but really, yeah, there's multiple team composition. Let me talk about some heroes that really like shine in this uh, battle. I'd say Isaria because she can block the, the boss's buff with her uh, cannot be uh, buff debuff. Uh, she has a high uptime on defense down debuff as well. Uh, I would say that uh, Tamarine, of course, she's got an amazing kit for this uh, fight. She can do uh, a bunch of uh, team healing. She can remove... Uh, uh, debuffs on your team she can attack buff she can trigger a dual attacks and uh, like i mean all her stuff is really good for this and she dispels she heals herself back uh, to full uh, dispel uh, debuffs on the whole team charles actually has a perfect kit for this boss attack down debuff making uh i mean making the damage of the boss much lower it's uh making it so it's much easier to sustain your team with your healers against all the damage from the boss charles can remove the buff on the boss so you can re uh, replace clurio with charles uh, the only thing is that with charles if you are doing skill one and two skill two often i mean you better have a hundred percent chance on that skill two to remove buff uh, he might build up the berserk effect of the boss quite fast 
if he's triggering skill one into skill two off, then there is uh, also, I mean, and he does a area damage that uh, scales dy dynamically with skill three. The, the lower the amount of uh, targets, the more damage he deals with skill three. Really great multipliers on him too. And attack buff, uh, defense buff for himself. Just make sure that you're not getting three uh, buffs if you're running Charles. That's, that's a downside though. Oh, here's the maintenance. There is also Vildred. He will destroy the adds, guys. He's just going to melt them and trigger more damage after that. So that's that's a really good hero in there. Kron, he can just spam area attack with his skill 1. Let me just turn this thing off. Kron. Where is he at? This thing is he's if he's buffed he's gonna do a aoe attack and decrease hit chance and this will hit the the adds as well so if you are spawning the observer and two scouts they will be hit with decrease hit chance debuff and the boss as well i mean it's really great he's gonna just destroy those adds all the time making it so much easier for uh your team to uh to survive all the mechanics you, you you can just skip mechanics pretty much because if you destroy the observers before the scouts show up you're in a really good place now oh, yes uh, Vildred just like ton of damage pops this and then like attack increase and just uh, if he kills with this or this he triggers another attack yeah it's I mean he's he's insane in terms of uh, AoE damage now, uh, yeah, I talked about Charles already. Just, just amazing attack down debuff, uh, remove uh, buffs, all buffs, increase attack for the whole team, increase def defense for himself, and a ton of damage really out of him. On top of all this, uh, he's amazing kit. Now Yuna, just like everyone can build her really, and AOE damage here, AOE damage here. And this thing scales dynamically based on how many targets are alive. So the fewer the targets, the more damage it deals. So it's it's really great. And yeah, everyone can get her. And attack speed buff, speed buff. So, I mean, you can use her, but don't use her with uh, uh, Angelica. It's very strong, but it's not going to work because it's, it's up to four buffs that you can have. And the boss will keep on triggering skill three. It's just gonna be too much to deal with, guys. You're, if you can actually do it, it's because you're overgearing the content, to be honest. Uh, okay, so let me talk about other heroes. Like, yes, if you have, let's say, Requirem Roar, she has the, str the two strongest debuffs in the game. Defense down for two turns, boost combativeness of the team, and attack down debuff with skill one. But, and also, if you are killing adds, she can, uh, she will heal the whole team by 15 percent of their health every time an enemy dies so like she can provide some healing out of that and there's a small life stealing uh, portion that gets added to the whole team but you i wouldn't probably not use her i have her but i wouldn't use her because i don't have uh celestine if you had the uh, celestine she's gonna really help out in terms of healing she can be a semi healer on top of uh being a debuffer and speeding up your group with the combat readiness and like the skill to the passive is gonna heal up your group. So really like if you have Celestine, you should definitely consider her. But if you have Shimadra's staff, she could be the one that uh, holds it. Uh, it's gonna boost the healing output of your whole team uh, between 30% and 40% if you've got plus 15 enhance or more on that thing. So really it's very strong if especially if you are running multiple healers it works on all form of healing like clary's skill too it works on that it work it's gonna work on anything that healed even lifesteal set so shimaja's staff is uh, very strong uh rod of amaryllis let's say you've got a healer in the back line because your frontliner your healer should definitely be using prophetic candlestick because it's gonna lower its uh cooldown quite often but definitely like it's not as good as wyvern because uh, the the boss is not actually attacking that often so you could definitely use on your frontliner rod of amaryllis really 
and it will uh, provide uh, some more uh, healing and it's all it's almost like having two healers basically this thing is just that powerful i have bloodstone i'm gonna show you my gear in a second i have bloodstone on bellona it's actually helping the uh, the team survive it doesn't show in the battle result but it's actually doing a considerable amount of healing bloodstone can actually be put on yuna as well and uh yeah yuna can deal a ton of damage but if you don't have it yuna will do perfectly fine with rosa hargana and it will uh, make it so she dual attacks more often when especially when you have a fast team and it's gonna tr she's gonna trigger dual attacks often in turn de dealing area damage and uh, killing those adds faster so really like that's a great one you could be using this as well very strong to have the rest of your team trigger dual attacks but the problem is that uh, if you have like uh, other heroes that have their skill one it won't do much damage it won't apply debuffs now if you're doing that what's going to happen is that the boss will be attacked more often and then in turn will build up that berserk faster so i, I would probably not use infinity basket uh, rosa organa is definitely good uh, for her uh, now other heroes really that you can use there's there's quite a few heroes it's just you have to keep in mind guys do not apply three debuffs or more against the the boss or you're gonna be uh like i mean you're just gonna shoot yourself in the foot really like it's just gonna be taken off and uh, i mean let's say you're using a kathis she's not gonna be using her skill one that often because she has to cycle through her healing skills as well so really like when you apply a debuff uh might be a while before you can actually have a chance to reapply it so debuffs are huge and like especially the ones that last for two turns so if they just get wiped out it's it's terrible it's terrible oh yeah martial artist can really strong he has the strong the two strongest debuffs the attack down and defense down i mean if you're lucky enough to have him of course he'd be amazing uh, to have and uh yeah just with the counter attacks and all that aoe damage on the ultimate of course like not everyone has him uh so yeah there's other options unfortunately chaos Psychax cannot be used uh he can potentially apply defense down bleed and attack down debuff so that's three they will get wiped out i would not use him phylus can be used as uh let's say as a tank you're gonna have a constant defense buff on your whole team you can you could turn off her skills if you don't want the barrier that doesn't give you too much uh the strength of the barrier is not that strong so like in in case you don't want to reach that three buff on your team definitely don't have that running uh, let me move on to some of the uh, light heroes like Ruel of Light of course if you have her like uh, Grants you can definitely use her she's gonna be amazing there and uh, I mean General Purgis could tank really uh, yeah every time he gets attacked there's AoE attack going off on the boss skill 2 and the ultimate so it's gonna boost the combat readiness of your team Doris can be used really great healer the problem is that the continuous healing will be dispelled every time the boss uses a skill 3 so just also it's gonna be hard to I mean there's a bunch of heroes you won't be able to bring because she already brings two uh, buffs on your team but like a really great amount of healing that she provides and uh, decrease the chance debuff is actually uh, quite amazing so yeah, Captain Rickerus after the uh, specializes, uh, specialization, defense down, uh, decrease cooldown by one turn, increase speed of your uh, team by two turns. And uh, I mean, he can stun one of the adds if the ad has the highest combat readiness. That's another plus. This thing cannot miss as well. He restore health for himself. And uh, I mean, he attacks all the spelling uh, a buff as well. So it's, it can remove the berserk off the boss and also in turn like help your team with dealing with the ads like i mean he he's a, a great uh, great hero for that uh, fight to be honest now uh, there's also like big damage dealers like i mean it, it might not appear in the earlier group compositions but you fiend i mean defense down uh, amazing debuff uh, silence i mean it's gonna silence the ads that's another plus the boss is immune to silence grant attack and speed buff i mean she could be paired with uh Yufin with Yuna later on in a in a speed comp if you're able to sustain the damage but like you could drop Clurry and you could be running double healers plus Yuna plus uh Yufin uh later on and then she also deals more damage if the uh target has a buff so if the boss has the berserk this thing will deal more damage of course the stun's not gonna work but still a ton of damage and it's gonna take the berserk after 
off uh, afterward. So really, like she she could be a great uh, pick for this. Other heroes, uh, yeah, I mean that's it. Doris, like you could put her on candlestick. Profit candlestick is just great, guys. I mean, there's area damage going off often in the battle, and to be honest. There's skill 2 and, and 3 from the boss that area uh, deal area damage and also the adds can, if they are spawning the uh, the observer into the scout, they can deal area damage as well and uh, Prophetic Candlestick has a lot of use there. I would actually wear it on Destina if I had another one built up, but I was using, uh, let me just show you my gear now because I think I talked enough about this whole uh, fight. She's uh, she just got level 51, I believe. I six starred her just now because, I mean, I tried different group composition. I try I, I I checked the mechanics and I I figured that this would be uh, the safer team I could come up with with my roster really. But uh, yeah, Bellona, just pause if I go too quick. Uh, that's her skill ups. That's her skills. Uh, her stats, sorry. So yeah, I made her like pretty high defense. Uh, like survival, defense plus health together, good survival, high speed, uh, high crit, decent crit damage, but her attack is low. It's all about that skill one, uh, really, that that works with defense down and boosts it, its damage. And her area damage, like this and this, and when you have five focus, this can trigger a skill three. It seems to be enough to take the adds out. I could definitely boost her damage output uh, later on so I can have more consistent runs, have the adds die faster so it's much easier. The faster you kill the adds, guys, the easier the run will be, really. That's that's what I'm seeing. And... Uh, three quorum roar. Angelica, that's her stats, uh, skill ups, and her gear. Her neck, I swapped some items around. I got her on sp with speed boots. She was too slow before. I felt like more speed would be like more consistent. And Prophet Candlestick, just great. She's in the front line. So she is getting attacked more often. But I mean, it's not as overpowered as when you wear that thing on your frontliner in Wyvern. Uh, it it's much stronger there. Clurry, just high speed. Make sure you've got 55% effectiveness on heroes that apply debuffs or uh, remove uh, buffs. It's going to be huge. You definitely don't want to uh, be missing your uh, buff removal. Skill ups, that's just this. Boss, of course, is immune to provoke. But it's a great skill. I mean, it, it doesn't actually deal damage, so that's another plus. And it, it won't... I mean, you can go at you can be at elemental disadvantage with skill three, and it's still still gonna land because it doesn't deal damage. And finally, this Tina. These are her stats. I could have more health on her, but this is what I. I mean, she's gonna level up, so she's gonna have better stats. Try to get her as much speed as possible. Her cooldowns are slow, though. Cooldowns are quite slow. And I mean, I'm using Wondrous Potion Vial. This is actually a great artifact for it to uh, take care of all the crazy amount of debuffs, especially if you let the Observer turn into the scouts. The amount of debuffs is going to be just nuts. So yeah, just <laughs> one skill up. To be honest, I've had Destina since the start. It's been over four months and I've had her sitting at five star for so long. And finally, she's now a six star and I'm going to bring her to level 60. But yeah, uh, yeah, Prophet Candlestick can def definitely be used. This is not even a 100% chance though, 75% chance. So you're going to have to uh, try different uh, setups. But her cooldowns are so long though. Six turn here, you, I need to skill this up to, uh, to get the five turn. But still, this can actually heal for quite a bit. So it's not bad, guys. It's not bad. She, as long as she's like, she has, she provides a steady stream of healing, it, it's good enough. But like I said, uh, if you don't have this team composition, definitely try out. Uh, like Yuna can definitely replace Bellona. Yuna will take out the ads so much faster well, than my Bellona with, with her gear. Uh, so yeah, Yuna with Akates. 
and Clurry, that's a good trio right there. And then your fourth, you're gonna need more healing. I mean, Clurry provides healing, Akatis provides good healing. Uh, Yuna could provide healing with Bloodstone. And your fourth, I mean, you're flexible, just make sure you are not applying three debuffs or more, or have uh, three buffs or more on your team, and you should be good to go, guys. So yeah, all right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe for more, guys. Uh, and check out my other videos. They should be showing up on the screen. I will try different group compositions and come out, uh, come up with other uh, team compositions uh, for you guys. So yeah, check me out. All right, peace out for now, and good luck with the farming and the drops, of course.